I'll, I'll just open with a with an introduction to, to Snowplow Micro and automated testing in general with, with Snowplow and behavioral data. Um, just for anyone who's unfamiliar, this is also just, you'll all have access to the slides for, for afterwards anyway. I just wanted to uh, make sure that for anyone who wasn't too familiar with Snowplow, that you got a brief introduction. Snowplow is just, uh, Snowplow is about helping organizations uh, collect behavioral data or generate behavioral data from a variety of sources, such as the website, mobile, and so on, and extends to a whole host of other sources that, that not all of our customers utilize today, that many are starting to, um, then kind of enhancing that data through unifying, validating, enriching, and so on, and then loading that into warehouse, lake, or real-time stream. And then we've also written a series of data models in DBT in our own proprietary software that um, kind of makes those tables AI, BI ready, um, that you can then plug into to different tools downstream, like data science studios, uh, BI tools, and then also publish to kind of different SaaS destinations via our CTL. Or you can forward them directly from the real-time stream um, via kind of a destination hub that we've built that's powered by GTM server-side and Snowplan. You can forward that data directly to things like Braze, Customer.io, Iterable, and so on. Um, or take our actions directly in, in your products. Like we've got customers personalizing content, um, kind of personalizing the user journey in different ways. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick overview of, uh, of Snowplow. Um, obviously happy to take any questions at the highest level as well, if you have them. Um, but I'll move on to, to more specifically micro. So uh, again, I'll try and keep this short because I think everyone on the call is very, very familiar with, with Snowplow and setting up tracking on it. But um, one of the cool things about uh, generating behavioral data with, with Snowplow is that you can you can follow kind of modular data structures. So you can you're effectively tracking events. So each request that's sent from your from your website or mobile app to your Snowplow pipeline is is one event. But to that event, well, that event itself can have custom properties. To that event, you can append um, an unlimited number of custom entities, and those entities can have their own properties. So in this example, um, the user interacts with um, a graph in this what app even is this? Some financial app, bank app. They click something in the bank app and an interaction event fires with information they clicked on a chart and they requested more details by clicking on the chart. But the, the contextual information is they clicked a button on this screen. So what screen was it? It's the overview screen and they're using the app in English. Um, but what's the, tell me about the user. The user is a business user because apparently this app can have business users or I guess personal investors or personal bankers or whatever it might be. I don't know much about banking. Um, and then, so this is a request that gets sent to your Snowplow pipeline um, that can get validated. And so the way it gets validated is each of these are a JSON object and they're validated against JSON schemas. And uh, it's standard kind of JSON schema v4 that we, that we support. Um, so you get all the validation rules supported by a JSON schema v4. Um, and so these schemas are kind of live in your, in your cloud account, in your schema registry called Igloo. Um, and then every time a request comes into the pipeline, the pipeline fetches a schema from, from Igloo and makes sure that the, the data that's in that JSON object is valid before sending the request further down to all these places to drive, drive business value. And so each, and so I, I talked about the uh, modular uh, uh, data structures you can have. So this is an event sent with two entities. Each um, event and entity in a request is, has its own schema that it's validated against. So this single request is validated against three different schemas. And so what are the things the schema validation checks for in the, in the pipeline before loading to your warehouse, uh, to your real-time data stream and so on? It checks the, the, the things in the request payload match the rules uh, defined in the JSON schema. So here, for example, in the screen entity, uh, we want to capture what language the, the user is, uh, is using the app in. And we know because we've built the app or the, the people building the app know that there's a finite list of languages they support. So they can say, I, I, want, the language, I want the language property to be one of this subset of, of values because I, I know what it's gonna be. So having this level of uh, confidence in the, in the data that lands in your warehouse makes it way easier to model the data. If I know that the only possible set of values is this set of five values of five languages we support, um, it becomes way easier to model or build 
uh, uh, engines to, to kind of trigger real-time actions or whatever it might be. And in this case, if there's an issue, it's the tracking has been set up with E lowercase n, um, that would get that would get invalidated where you have this enum style validation in the JSON schema. So that's quite strict validation. This is the kind of thing that, that gets caught. Um, <clears throat> and so because you have this kind of validation in, in the platform itself, so this is this validate piece, and you can see it's kind of upfront validation before loading to any destination. And so because that exists um, and we want to give uh, users of Snowplow the ability to kind of ensure high data quality in all the in all the places the data is loading. Um, most of our customers have a setup something like this, where when you're uh, when you're uh, implementing your tracking, um, we set customers up and open source users can set this up themselves as well with a sandbox pipeline, also known as Snowplow Mini. So this is a small well a small instance, a mini instance of the whole pipeline that's just a single box. It's an EC2 instance on AWS, for example. And the request, and it has its own endpoint in the cloud, so you can send the request, uh, you can configure the endpoint in your app when it's in development mode to point to Snowplow Mini, your sandbox env environment. And Snowplow Mini um, is bound to a development schema registry. So we call that dev. And so that's where you can host the schemas when tracking is in production. So let's say you've got um, what was the example I used here? You've got an interaction event at 100. Um, you're like, oh, I want to, I want to change what interaction event looks like. So I want to add a, th a third property to the schema. So I'd make interaction event 101 if the property is uh, optional, i.e., a non-breaking change. So I'd upload that schema to the dev schema registry and test my tracking against in that sandbox environment, um, fetching the schema from the dev registry. Once I'm happy with that tracking. I can then uh, promote the schema to production. Once I promote the schema to production, I may uh, send the data. Uh, I, I may send data to um, to a QA pipeline. So some of our customers have a full QA pipeline, so not the mini single box EC2 instance, but the full end-to-end -end pipeline, like a, a direct copy of their production pipeline, to see maybe test that the changes uh, cascade correctly through to their data models and so on. Um, and that is checking, validating the schema against the uh, schema in the prod registry. So you can migrate the 101 interaction event from here to the 101 interaction event in the prod registry. Then when you're happy with that, you can point the tracking to the production pipeline endpoint. So there's three endpoints, sandbox endpoint, QA endpoint, and then production pipeline endpoint. And that's great um, because even if, so you've, you've now promoted your tracking to production, um, even when it's in production, there's a whole bunch. This is the Snowplow uh, user interface. You can get alerting for if uh, if uh, a significant number of events are failing validation more than expected, and there's a whole bunch of monitoring. And then you can go in and debug what the issue is, like n, you know, e lowercase n doesn't fit the the subset of uh, specified in the enum in the JSON schema for that for that uh, schema. And so you can go and resolve that issue and fix it. So even in production, there's a way to rectify. But um, there is still a need for what we're going to talk about today, which is Snowplow Micro. So even though um, I've talked through this, this whole kind of tiered QA approach with these different, different levels of QA, we're really checking for this kind of, we're really checking for this kind of issue where there's an inaccuracy in the data that's tracked. There's a whole bunch of things that aren't checked for before getting into production. Um, so first of all, uh, you'll do a whole bunch, like a lot of front-end developers do a whole bunch of checks on the, on the tracking before they promote to production um, for, for other kinds of issues, which I'll go into in a second. But those checks are typically ad hoc or spot, spot checks. Um, so these are very time consuming, first of all, it's, it's people's time. Um, and they're non-exhaustive and subject to human error. I've done this a whole bunch and I've always, I always miss a whole bunch of issues that someone comes knocking on my door saying the dashboard is broken a week later. Um, also, there's this kind of nagging feeling that if you're doing a big update, you might break tracking that's already uh, that already exists, and you can't always go back and check all the tracking that's already been been set up if you if you change something. Um, and obviously, the further issues get um, in this kind of in this process, the more expensive they become to fix. So, if we take the worst case scenario, which is a mobile app that gets you know you've arranged with the app store for a published date, a whole bunch of your users have downloaded it, you detect a bug. You then have to publish to the app store again and wait for the long tail of users to update their app for it to be rectified. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of checks that 
the hard validation of the pipeline against JSON schemas doesn't check for by design. So this is absolutely by design. If you've got hard validation in the pipeline for those accuracy checks, there's some checks that, that can still affect data quality that aren't built into the pipeline. They're kind of softer validation checks that you can run with Snowplan Micro and automated tests with Snowplan Micro. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's this next level of testing. Um, so you've already got a good base of um, high accuracy in the Sandbox pipeline and QA pipeline, but this next level is what you can achieve with Snowplan Micro. So a couple of use cases. So what if uh, I showed you that request right at the beginning, remember, where it's interaction event, then screen entity and user entity. What if I forget to append a user entity? Pipeline validation wouldn't catch that. Pipeline validation or the hard validation in the production pipeline or sandbox pipeline is only checking if the information you've sent in the schemas, in, in the JSON objects you have sent validates against the schema. It's not checking if the information exists in the first place or, or if that, that entity exists in the first place. But Snowplan Micro can, can check for that. What if the request is missing entirely? What if when someone does press this chart thing to get more details, um, a request isn't sent? So you've forgotten to set up tracking somewhere. Again, the pipeline doesn't know. Um, the pipeline's only checking of the requests that are sent to it, are they accurate? Pipeline doesn't know the request wasn't sent at all. Um, so missing data. Or if you click this and you're only expecting one request, but instead you send two requests, again, pipeline validation doesn't catch that, but Snowplan Micro can. Um, schemas can be missing. So uh, let's say you do send the request, per you build the request perfectly, but you've forgotten to actually upload the schema to your cloud account. Um, pipeline doesn't realize, well, actually, you know what, this is wrong. The, the pipeline would catch this. Um, so this is not a Snowplan Micro use case. The pipeline would catch this one. Um, I'll move this slide later. Um, incorrect entities. So if the wrong entity is sent with an event, so maybe this, uh, so let's say we've randomly got a game entity here that's being sent to this. There's no game that's being played here, but it's appended to, the, uh, to this event incorrectly. The pipeline would, would validate that. It wouldn't realize that that's wrong. The pipeline doesn't know which entity is meant to be sent with which event. Um, and so Snowplan Micro could catch something like that. Or if you have lenient validation. So let's say you've captured an interaction event and you've clicked here. Uh, you want to know the object that's been interacted with as a chart, but it's spelt wrong, it's C-H-R-A-T. If you look at the schema, the schema is just checking that the, that, the, that the value here is a string of length of max length 60. It doesn't know the chart is spelt wrong though. Again, something that Snowplan Micro can check for. And so I've talked a lot about Snowplan Micro. So what is Snowplan Micro? Um, it's a dockerized uh, version of Snowplow that you can run locally. It is the exact same Scala code as the production pipeline for collect and validate. And it exposes four, uh, four API endpoints. One is good, one is bad. So uh, you can send uh, requests to your Snowplan Micro. And by hitting these API endpoints, you can see the request that comes through the good stream and the bad stream. Important thing to note is, as I said, this is run locally on your machine. It's a very small instance. So it can be spun up in, a, I think, less than a second. Um, and the validate part of Snowplan Micro can be bound to the production schema registry of your, of your production pipeline. So you're not, uh, you're not checking against some dev registry or some local registry. You can check it against a production registry just before you push live. And you can integrate, uh, you, you can uh, set up a whole bunch of automated tests against Snowplan Micro. So as you have, or presumably many, many companies already have a whole suite of automated tests for any product release. Anytime you add a feature, you update your automated tests. Every time you uh, push a new build live, there's a whole bunch of automated tests to make sure it's all right. Most companies don't have that for analytics. Snowplan Micro enables you to set up that same level of testing, same level of rigor for analytics for all those use cases I, I just ran through.